What's up guys? So today I'm out here at the Steady Ed Disc Golf Course in Augusta, Georgia, or actually right outside of Augusta in Appling, Georgia. But I'm here at the International Disc Golf Center. If you're not familiar with this property, there's actually three courses on the property. The hardest being WR Jackson, which if you've watched the Champions Cup uh, footage, that's where um, a pro tour stop is. Really great course, very difficult. Steady Ed course, the course that I'm playing today, is probably the easier of the three. And then you got the Warner course, which is kind of in between both of those. But nonetheless, uh, if you haven't been out to this property before, it's definitely worth the trip. All three courses, you can play them all in a day. Wonderful property, well kept up with. As you can tell, it's beautiful out here by the lake. Uh, today, it's a little bit rainy, a little bit misty, so it's not the best day, but nonetheless, feels pretty good out here. So the name of the game today is just going to be to keep your disc dry, get your footing well, and all that kind of stuff. If you are a beginner, this course is not going to be great for you, but if you're in that intermediate to advanced level, this is going to be a pretty fun but somewhat challenging course. If you're an open player, you should be uh, shooting pretty well out here. Again, uh, some challenging shots, but overall, uh, this one out of all the three courses is probably the one you're going to score the best on. Um, but guys, again, if you haven't checked out this property, make sure uh, to try to schedule a trip to come out here. So today I just wanted to take some time and show you the Steady Ed course. This is one of my favorites to play. And uh, so we'll see what we can do out here. Again, the weather's not great, but nonetheless, hopefully I'll, I'll be able to shoot well. So let's see how it goes. All right, so I threw my s -Blend Sphinx down here. Probably the best drive I've ever had on this hole. It shaped the fairway perfectly. Uh, probably only got a little over 100 feet left, so I'm just gonna pitch up with the tune. Should be right under it. Pitched up with the tomb. Start the day off with a birdie. So I didn't realize it, but they actually moved the basket to the short placement, which I think is like 275 or something like that. I was not playing to the short placement, so I kind of got a little lucky that my drive is probably 25, 30 feet out, but um, see if I can convert. All right, after that last hole, I figured I'd kind of break down the holes a little bit. This is gonna be in the short placement. It's hole three, 290, par three. If you go down here, the basket, I don't know if you can see it through there. Sorry for the shaky cam. It's actually on some rocks. You got this sort of fairway here. You just wanna have something that fades, but it does drop off uh, pretty hard to the left there. So you wanna have some speed control here. So I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, but I actually have a lot of new discs that I'm trying out, including this Halo Tomb. Also got some new Halo Pharaohs and a few other new discs. So uh, there might be some holes where I'm throwing multiple shots and trying to see how these things fly, but uh, let's see how the Halo Tomb flies. That looked pretty good. I couldn't see where it finished, but it faded perfectly, nice and overstable. I heard it hit rocks, but I don't know how close it is to the basket, so we'll see. All right, so this is where my halo tomb landed. Must have hit these rocks by the basket here, up behind it. Let's see if I can make this, about 10 feet. All right, another birdie, we're rolling here. All right, on to hole four. Uh, this is a pretty soft par four. I think it's in the B placement. Uh, 405 really it goes up 
this fairway here. I don't know if I can get the basket. Maybe I can kind of see it in the distance there. But really, this is all about positioning. I mean, you can try to get up to the basket, but really the, the play is just to uh, get something in play and have a pitch up and take an easy three. But I'm sure you can eagle this one pretty easily if you got the arm. All right, so I just put these Halo Pharaohs in the bag. Uh, this is a disc that I've been waiting on. I love the Pharaoh. Um, this is a nice pop top. This will be my first throw with it. So let's see what it does. Try what you want. Just a nice skip up to the middle. Should have an easy pitch up for four, or excuse me, for a three. All right, we're on to hole five. This is another par four, 510 feet. Uh, in my opinion, the best hole in the course. Um, you wanna go out of this tunnel and the basket kind of down there uh, where the curve starts to happen, the basket is off to the left. So the big arms can get there uh, and get an eagle look. You know, if you're throwing 400 or so, this is a pretty routine par four. Um, new disc in my bag is the um, the Grace, the Kristen Tartar Grace, uh, feels really good. I haven't thrown it yet, so this will be my first throw. I don't really want to lose my pharaohs over the water, so we're going to see how this flies. Pretty good. A little more overstable than I was expecting, but really good glide and a nice solid finish. So should have a pretty routine up and down. All right, guys, well, I'm off to a hot start, which on the first five, I like to be at least four under. Um, as you can tell, some of those are kind of tweeners. So this one is hole six, 220. Um, you can, the basket's straight ahead, as you can tell right through there. You can either go up the middle, but I think the preferred route, if you're a right-handed player, is this backhand hyzer. Even if you're a lefty, a nice forehand hyzer usually gets you right up there to the basket. All right, from what I can remember, this is not out of bounds. At least I don't think so. All right, on to hole seven. This is another par four. I'm not sure if it's in the A or B placement. I think I've only played it in the B, but you wanna go down this fairway and that tree that's kind of leaning in the middle there, you wanna go, I think, just inside of that on the right side. You don't wanna push too far on this hole, I know that, because it kind of cuts you off your angle to get to the basket. So just trying to get a placement shot and then an easy approach.
there's my tomb upshot. As I was saying off the tee, uh, my, my disc landed pretty much straight ahead right there, which I was saying if you hug that tree line, that's going to give you a lot straighter shot. Um, if you land over in this area, you have to play more of a skip. So it's definitely better to try to hug that tree line. Oops, sorry. And you get it right here. All right, on the hole eight, this is in the par three placement. Straight ahead, another rocky green there. It says it's 235. It might be. Feels like that's a, feels like it plays longer to me. So I'm gonna try to go mid range here. All right, on hole nine. Uh, again, I'm not sure if this is in the short or the long. Um, regardless, you're trying to go up the fairway, I'm trying to land about halfway up there, and that's where the alley to the right is. And if it's to the left, you should be able to see the basket. Gonna try another Halo Faro. snuck through but y'all the glide on those things is incredible so if you haven't tried a pharaoh yet make sure to go pick one up ah too low too low all right i didn't say it before but if you didn't think well, sorry, if you didn't figure it out, this is in the par five. I went with a Faro again, um, trying to get something to hold that nice turnover, but kind of flex out at the end. And I, I threw it perfect, but just a little too low. As far as the line, it was perfect, but um, just had to get a little bit higher. Up and burp. All right, guys, we're on the hole 10. I believe this is in the A placement. Yep. Which goes down this fairway. Don't know if I'm going to pick it up. You can see the basket right through there. Nice forehand shot. Go with the Jumpman Wraith. I just hit the basket and it rolls all the way out to the middle of the fairway. Are you kidding me? So guys, this is where I landed after hitting the basket. It rolled to about circle's edge, but man, that was so close. But got about circle's edge here for the bird. On to hole 11, another par four. Um, honestly, guys, I don't remember much about this hole, but as you can tell, this has got three fairways, two basket placements. The tee pad's really unique in that you can go down the right fairway, down the middle, or over here to the left. Because I don't know which placement it's in, it seems like the middle one um, plays to both. So I'm gonna try to go down the middle. I need to go get a Faro right now on infinitedisc.com. So this is where my Faro landed, which if it was in the left placement, that's where the basket is. I'd have, you know, probably a 200 foot approach. 
Unfortunately, the basket is in the right placement, right over there. So not the best placement. Also, I think distance driver is a little too much unless you know that the basket is where it's supposed to be. So I'm probably just gonna have to go big hyzer and hope I can get there. Late tree. All right, guys, on to hole 12. This is in the B, or sorry, the A placement, 300 feet. I've never played it in this position. It, it's just a forehand hyzer or big backhand turnover right through there. It's normally in the long placement right out there. Guys, this Halo Wraith is just hunting today. Got me about three feet from the basket. Maybe I'll get one to fall pretty soon. All right, on to hole 13. Um, I don't see the basket in the short, so I'm assuming it's the uh, par five, 590 feet. Um, you wanna go across over here where it opens up and then it bends hard to the right. And after that, I can't really remember I think it goes down and then it goes back to the left up there. Pretty difficult hole. Although it's a short one, should get a birdie, but um, it, it does get pretty tight up there. All right, on the hole 14, this is a par three, 215 feet. As you can tell from the map, there's two fairways. You can go up this gap here on the right, or what a lot of players will do is throw a big forehand or big turnover uh, Anheuser and uh, try to crash in the basket right through there. All right, on to hole 15. Again, I have no idea if this is the short or the long, but uh, both, no, I'm sorry, the short is a par four, the long is a par five. Uh, I think they both could qualify as par fours, which is kind of the theme a lot of times on this course, but uh, really nice fairway. Just want to go up and push left. Should be able to see the baskets from there. So the basket's in the par five placement. My drive is in a pretty ideal location. So I'm gonna go for the Eagle. Should be up there.
All right, on to hole 16. This is, I believe, in the par four placement. Um, you've got a couple of ways you can go. You can go over here to the right. No, maybe not. Maybe it's mostly just up the middle here. And it goes over this hill and it goes back down. I'm not sure exactly where the basket is, um, but I do know it goes over that hill. And if you get over that, you should be able to see it pretty clear. Yikes. All right, unfortunately took a bogey on that last hole, erasing that eagle. Um, this one is hole 17. I believe it's in the A placement, which is 240. Uh, kind of see it through the woods there. Nice uh, forehand shot or a little putter turnover. with the X out flat top slab, crazy overstable. Almost rang it up, I thought. All right, onto the final hole, hole 18, par four. Not sure again if it's an A or B. It used to go through this fairway and it would finish off to the left, but they're doing a lot of construction up there. So I don't know if they added a new basket placement or not, but they also carved out this other fairway. Sorry I'm out of breath, y'all. I'm out of shape, and I just walked up this crazy hill. But I'm just going to punch out, or hope to, and then surely be able to see the basket after that. So the way you want to go is out the gap and the basket is all the way through there. If you hit it clean, you should have a clean open shot, but I don't. So I'm going to try to get sneaky here. Try to go over here. That worked out that is the luckiest shot ever i'm just gonna go ahead and apologize for this the raptor hit off a tree and got me five feet from the basket for a final birdie all right guys well that's gonna do it i decided to close this video out in my truck because it started raining on me uh, we do have a storm coming through so um anyway but overall amazing day today um, one of the best rounds I've shot at the IDGC at all. Um, but I will say this, and I do want to make this clear that today was kind of one of those exceptional rounds. And I know like most of the videos on my channel tend to be when I'm, I'm shooting pretty good. Um, and I think a lot of that guys is because I, I think I tend to focus a little bit better when I'm videoing myself. I want to make sure that I'm throwing good shots. Uh, I am not a person that has the time nor the energy to uh, edit videos. As you can tell, mine are not the highest quality uh, to where, you know, I'm going to sit out there and try to throw, throw, throw until I find that perfect shot. That's just not going to be me. Um, these rounds are very casual, so there's not a lot of pressure. So I would love to tell you that in tournament rounds, I shoot, you know, as good as I did today, but that's just not the truth. Uh, for me, um, coming out here, doing these videos is a lot of fun, uh, no pressure. So I tend to go for things a little bit more than I would in a tournament. And uh, guys, I'll be honest, today, Steady Ed, I would say 
um, played as easy as, I, as I've ever played it. The baskets were in the short placements. As you can tell, there are a lot of par fours and par fives that should probably be, you know, if it's a par five, it should probably be a par four. And if it's a par four, there were some that could have been par threes. And so you had a lot of tweener holes out there today, which also uh, was reflected uh, in the score. Um, now, I will say this is a very fun course, so don't hear me knock this course at all. I absolutely love it. But I'll shoot uh, a video at WR Jackson pretty soon. You'll be able to see the difference. I, I would be um, ecstatic if I shot par uh, on that course. It's, it's very difficult. But one of the things I think is the main difference between Steady Ed and, um, and Jackson is Jackson has a lot of long par fours. So where uh, if you took some of the holes from Jackson and put them on Steady Ed course, they'd probably go up a stroke to make it a little bit easier. Hope that makes sense. But, um, you know, Jackson's got tougher holes and things like that. So if you're looking for a fun course in the area just to come and play, I would highly recommend Steady Ed. Jackson's going to give you a big challenge. And if you want to play one that's kind of in between, come check out Warner. But guys, they do an awesome job keeping up with the property. And one of the things I love most about these courses is, uh, if you're like me, I, I hate slick tee pads. Like, that is one thing I just... I. If it's raining, usually I don't go out and play because I cannot stand playing on slick tee pads. Um, but today, the tee pads were wet, but I didn't think about slipping once, nor did I slip once. They do an, uh, an excellent job keeping those up. Um, incredible grip on them, no matter what the condition. So you never have to worry about that. But guys, once again, thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate y'all supporting the channel. I'm doing my best to come up with some more creative stuff. But at this point in my life, I'm just doing good to get out here and get around in. But definitely want to show you all the beautiful courses in this area. So I hope you're enjoying that. Stay tuned because I will do a video at WR Jackson as well as the Warner course here. And I'll try to show you some other courses in the area. But until then, hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody has a great uh, Christmas holiday, and I'll catch you in the next one.